if you follow my channel you know that lately i've been doing a lot of electric vehicles and i am really really digging what electric vehicles are and how they perform and just just how awesome they are the sl plus trim level provides the best performance and feature selection that Nissan has to offer. It comes equipped with a 110 kilowatt AC electric motor and a 62 kilowatt per hour lithium ion battery. That means this is the most horsepower, the most torque, and the best acceleration that the LEAF can accomplish. Hey, hey everybody, Brock Frady here, helping you enjoy your ride. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a 2021 Nissan LEAF SL Plus. This thing is the top of the line as far as the Nissan LEAF line is concerned. It's got tons and tons of amazing, awesome features, and I love the drive of this thing. It's no Tesla, but it doesn't try to be. It is very, very functional, easy to use, and it's extremely smooth. It's like a luxury vehicle inside, and that's mainly because this is the SL Plus trim, so it's got the bigger battery, more powerful motor, longer range. And I would love to thank Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this Nissan LEAF SL Plus. I'll be sure to leave all of Impex Auto Sales contact information, including their website, in the description box below. Let's take a look at the key fob. You can see on the top it's got lock, Below that, it's unlock, and below that, it says hold, and it's got a little plug icon. So I just held that, there was a beep, and this door just opened. And that shows us our plugs. How cool is that? So this is like a plug that you would use if you wanted to plug in, like at your house. And then this is the plug for a supercharger, for lack of a better term, quick charging. Let's take a look at the cable. There's a rubber button directly under the Nissan emblem. You just squeeze the button and it comes right up. There's also a camera back there. So here is your big old cable. And so this is gonna be the one, the, the orange covered one that I showed you on the right side. And then this is what actually plugs into your house or to, or, you know, an outlet like this. And then there, here is your whole big converter box. This pulls electricity from here, converts it into energy that can be put into the, uh, or, or come out of this head right here. And that is it. That's, that's actually pretty cool. And then this cable is actually really long. So that's that. There's a ton of room back here. You can see you've got some floor mats there, but uh, there's room, it's, it's much wider in the very far back than it is up here. That's just because of the wheel well cutouts. And then you've got this little panel here the storage shelf or the shelf right here that's connected to these strings so you can actually take this out and not have that there if you don't want it there you can also see that the back seat is a 60 40 split you have points there for child safety seats but if you wanted to uh, fold down the right side independently of the left or vice versa and still make room for rear passengers you can do that right there tons of room back there uh, you also have little dots there on the bumper that's park assist that's what's going to beep if you get too close to something in parking lots and there it looks like there are four on the back bumper yep notice of course you do not have a tailpipe because obviously it's electric and i love the width of the back that actually makes it look more substantial uh and it it's just a just a really good look check out the rear tail light housing there Nice, big, substantial, and it kind of wraps around to the midway about the quarter panel. It's kind of neat that the whole line trim piece from under the mirror all the way follows all the way to the flow into the light. Very cool. I would like for this to be a power rear door, but it's not. That's okay. You have a camera there. And then once you close it, you see your zero emission emblem SL+. Plus and then leaf on the left side great look you also notice that the roof is black you would think that this would be like a panoramic roof it's not it's just a metal roof um, and i don't know why it's black it's a different color than the rest of the body maybe just to make it look more fancy let's take a look at the heart of the beast that's normally what i would say but this one's electric so 
what's under here Woohoo! so that's a lot of stuff that actually looks kind of neat because it looks like it would be a traditional engine for a regular car but of course it's not that's just a bunch of motor electric and all your things going on there and I mean it looks like you have normal stuff like for a regular engine because you've got all kinds of different fluids there there's coolant uh, there's fuse boxes there's a regular battery uh, but then you notice the difference is going to be these big orange wrap cords and that indicates on any vehicle that's either hybrid or electric that it's got some type of electric component to it this one obviously all electric that's that's pretty neat so that's what makes this baby go take a look at this trim right here it's a sunny sunny day so this is really reflecting and it is beautiful it's like a blue reflecting deep color and it's got a real shine a real sparkle to it and that it looks like a so far i've only seen this on this certain part of the the vehicle underneath i don't know if the back of it matches at all but no there's oh yeah 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 so it looks like there's a little panel right here too and that's not in the sunlight but i can see here that it's blue that's got a really cool look to it i love the wheels on this thing those look so good this one is comes equipped with michelin and i've been driving this thing for several miles now and this car is super quiet we'll take it for a spin in just a minute but those are really really good looking wheels and this is running on michelin p215 50 r 17s all season tires really really good looking i like how the mirror is uh, color coded to the roof so the mirror matches the roof that's a good look and you also have integrated led turn signals that's right there so that not only does your back turn signal light up and blink whenever you've got your signal on there's a little bitty part right here that sticks out just a little bit you can see that and that's just enough so the people behind you know you're turning in tension if this turn signal is blocked by the vehicle behind you they can maybe see that right there that's integrated into the side mirror it's probably a little bit hard to see and it looks like this is blinking but it's really not that's just the nature of led and cameras but you can see that led light right there that daytime running light that looks really really nice you can also see the daytime i mean the uh, led headlights right there see how bright that is i love the fact that this is full led fog lights right there that is a great add-on i love that you can also see kind of inside with how how brightly the sun is shining on there it looks like this blue reflective material that's on the inside uh, of that whole big emblem area there's also your camera there under the nissan badge this has just got so much cool stuff going on up front that is a great looking front face i love the way that looks this thing is um, actually a legit looking car uh and, and you know you can tell that this is the upgraded version this is the sl with the wheels and everything okay here's where i'm struggling a little bit with the leaf the back seat is kind of weird the main reason is because when you open the door and you put your foot down you're used to your foot going down and sitting in down in kind of a foot well that's not the way this thing is because there are batteries in the floorboard underneath it takes up room and so it makes it so that there's very little room for your feet here and it feels like your feet are up on a platform you can see my knees and they're up a little bit where they would normally be down and also i have my seat adjusted to where i was driving it and you can see my knees are right here where i i can't i can't close my legs and i feel like that i'm up higher than the driver position is so I feel like I'm sitting up and, and kind of looking over the driver. It's kind of a unique perspective. One of the good things that they've done to help compensate though is the headroom. You've actually got good headroom and I'm over six feet tall. So it's, it's just, my head is almost touching it. But I think that's because of the fact that there are, you know, the battery pack in here. So it brings the floorboard up. It brings the bottom of the seat up. So, you know, that's kind of a, a weird sensation it's easy to get used to and i can tell you what you're barely going to get three people back here there are three seat belts 
but there's also a big console right here where there are cup holders so whoever is sitting in the middle is going to have to spread their legs and put their feet on either side of that console so it's not going to be a, a really comfortable situation for three people so it's going to be good for short trips the thing that i really like about it and i think it's because of the trim level of this one is the fact of the materials and this thing actually feels like it's a luxury vehicle when it comes to materials there's like this line right here and it feels like suede on the inside it's got the blue stitching uh, that that's kind of continuing the theme with the blue trim pieces outside uh, and the blue lettering in the floor mats you also have really really good supportive um, uh, seats here and it looks like they're ventilated they're not but they have little holes in them and it, it's it's got like a luxury feel and of course everything matches the front there are uh, more of this blue uh, or gray suede material that's in the front seats as well so from a like a like a quality standpoint it really gets high marks but from the feel of it and the way the the a third passenger would have to adjust themselves to ride in it it's just kind of a weird back seat situation. I spent a lot of time just talking about the back seat of a Nissan Leaf. And here's how I have to get out. Now the front seat situation is totally different than the back seat situation. I really, really like the way the front seat feels. On the outer portions of each front seat, there's like this material that feels like suede. I, I doubt any of this is actually real leather, but it feels legit and these things are really really comfortable they're side bolstering that's very supportive both on the seat portion and on the side portion up above and the placement of the center console right here is absolutely perfect to place your arm on and it's really really comfortable also in really good proximity to the cup holder so everything is very reachable the steering wheel has a flat bottom to it makes it feel a little bit like a race inspired steering wheel blue stitching everything really really goes together well there's also like a carbon fiber ish type material right here on the dash that just is there for looks no real function to it just pretty cool looking gear shifter right here and so everything is is very very reachable the other thing too is in the front seat I have probably a solid six inches of headroom right here so it, it's like this thing is designed for front seat passengers uh, and very minimalist in the rear seat but this seat is really really comfortable and the view the angle there's these little bitty windows in the corners uh, those actually enhance your view uh, very very few blind spots so this this the situation the experience in the driver's seat excellent really really good which is where you're going to be spending all your time backseat passengers can fend for themselves in wrapping up with the driver's seat i was really pleasantly surprised at the fact that this thing had full power in the driver's seat plus lumbar and that lumbar is really really nice so you can raise it up bring it down the other thing too about this because of the batteries uh, along the floorboard i, th I think this position of this seat bottom is actually raised up a little bit so it feels kind of awkward at at the very first but you get used to it very quickly this one's got the upgraded Bose stereo system and that thing like I mentioned before that thing will absolutely thump I like the basics of the controls here automatic one touch window for the driver's door only or the driver's window only then lock and unlock lock the windows this is gonna be the power controls for your uh, side mirrors and that's basically it soft touch material here with that blue stitching here i really like the blue stitching that is just so cool all right moving on this opens your charger door this is for the charging timing heated steering wheel and steering assist lights for your gauges uh, this is going to be for your lights they're automatic uh, as the sun goes down they'll cut on automatically and then over on the far side your uh, stock for your windshield wipers let's hop in and take a look at this thing from the perspective of the driver's seat getting into the leaf is super simple nice and easy uh, that there's like i said there's tons of headroom uh, everything just works really really well together listen to wait to the way the door closes you guys if you know my videos you know me i'm fascinated by door closing sounds that's a good one that's a that's a legit door close 
I really like that. In order to start the leaf, let me show you the process. You can see here there is an icon that says push brake and power switch to drive. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. And then the power switch is right here in the center console. So it's just a little power button. I have the key on me. I just touch that and it fires right up. Notice that there is not a tachometer. There's only a, a speedometer, obviously, because there's no need for a tach because it's electric. Everything fires right up. I really like it. You can see here in your center stack, you've got that really nice screen right there. Then you've got your climate controls there in the middle. I like how that's it, it, cool design there. Almost looks like an airplane wing or something. Then below that, far far left power button. Then you got charging places here for an iPhone and then for an Android if you want to. And then you have heated seats and then a lighter adapter. I would like to see wireless charging in this. You would think that would be there, but it's not. Then you have an eco button here that makes it uh, drive a little bit more efficiently, but there's less power available. Uh, then e-pedal. I love e-pedal. E-pedal basically makes it so you can drive with the gas pedal only. So when e-pedal is active and you're riding around, when you press the gas, obviously it's going to go. Or you press the accelerator, it's going to go. When you take your foot off of the accelerator, when you start to move it off of the accelerator only a little bit, it will start to really slow down dramatically. If you're driving down the road and you take your foot off of the accelerator completely, it's almost like someone put the brake on. That's actually by design. Whenever e-pedal is active uh, and you take your foot off, it goes into regenerative braking to add power to, to charge the battery, but it also makes it so that you could actually fully take your foot off of the accelerator and if you plan ahead well enough there's a stoplight ahead or whatever there's a stop sign it will come to a complete stop for you so if you're driving around in a residential neighborhood you in some cases you may not even need to apply your foot to the brake because when you take your foot off of the accelerator, it's braking for you. It's a really unique experience and it takes a little bit of practice, but I really, really enjoy that feature of it. E-pedal and the button down there to engage it is right there. You also have to engage it every time you, you cut the vehicle on. Let me show you that. You see right there, it says E-pedal off. So in order to activate E-pedal, I just push that and e-pedal is lit up in blue now and so now it's active. Now you've got this kind of a mound right here and this is your gear selector. Uh, in order, whenever you come to a stop and you're ready to park somewhere, you just push P and the parking brake activates or it puts it into park. Um, you can see here there's like a cutout. In order to put it in drive, you just drop it down low and D just came up on the dash and there's a cool little noise happening right now under the front hood or you can move it up here and that's reverse and you can hear that listen not sure if you can hear it or not but there's a humming on the outside I'm at parking lot speeds if you can hear that humming that is for people that are visually impaired and it makes it so that they know that there's a vehicle around it's a fantastic safety feature in the event that you're in a city setting and there's crosswalks and people need to know that there's a vehicle around. This obviously has no engine noise, so that's what that's for. Quite cool. And so that sound is built in. It's actually really, really cool because if you think about it, if you come to, if, if you're backing up and there's someone, someone that is blind, that's around the vehicle and they can't see and they can't hear an engine then they aren't going to know that there's a vehicle potentially that's backing up and could possibly run over them so nissan put that in there as a way to let someone know who is blind that the vehicle there's a vehicle around them so that they could hear a noise that is a great great safety feature and that happens when you put it in reverse there's also a kind of a hum whenever you're driving the vehicle and up to it seems like it's 25 30 miles an hour and then it, the volume of it slowly goes away and i think that's there for the very same purpose so that when you're moving forward there are people 
who are visually impaired that would be able to hear the vehicle around you, obviously because there's no engine noise. Great feature. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, all of this is going to be controlled basically by this one multi-directional keypad right here. And you can see up there it says settings. So I'm going to take this multi-directional keypad, move it up, down, left, and right in order to adjust the settings. I'm gonna zoom in on this just so you can see it better. So going up and down, you can see that right now I'm in settings, VDC and that allows you to cut on or off basically the traction control on the vehicle pushing the back arrow driver assistance pressing ok and that allows you to change the things that have to do with driving assistance so steering assist lane departure alert lane departure warning and prevention it's obvious what those are if you're getting outside of your lane it alerts you on this one it's adjusted right now to where the steering wheel vibrates and it vibrates big time i mean it, it kind of scared me at first then lane departure prevention it will actually nudge the wheel left or right to prevent you from getting over if you are not signaling back arrow and then blind spot all of the adjustments so this is allow going to allow you to adjust all of these features like steering assist lane blind spot, uh, e-brake, parking aids, and all those things right here within driver assistance. And all of that is within settings. Chassis control, that's pretty cool. Active trace control, I love that. And then e-pedal. So all of that was within driver assistance. Then you have customized display. So all of these, whenever you go to settings, I would really recommend messing with all of these, going in and, and reading and seeing exactly how each of these work because it's going to make it so that your ownership of the leaf is so much better if you know how everything works and what things mean. Rear door alert, off lighting. Light sensitivity is standard. In other words, it determines when lights cut on and cut off light off delay in other words whenever you get out of the leaf your lights will automatically stay on for 45 seconds i think unless you press the door lock button on your key fob twice if you press it once it'll lock the doors if you press it twice it'll cut all the lights off so this allows it to stay on for 45 seconds if you only press it once that is so neat dude. i want to go back here to wipers oh speed dependent wipers on i actually like that so as when it's raining at the faster you go the faster your wipers wipe electric vehicle settings this is probably some time that you want to spend here because it is an electric vehicle and it would be good to really uh, know all of the ins and outs of the electric portion charge connector lock automatically yep you want to do that so it's it's going to lock automatically and and basically lock the connector to the connecting port uh, so that it doesn't fall out whenever it's charging charge timer one so nice full charge has priority so these again things to really um, really get acclimated with TPMS is tire pressure monitor system settings and is that you want that to be in pounds per square inch all of that is uh, under settings I really like that. Now I'm going to press right on this multi-directional keypad and you can see as I'm pressing right and left, it's going in between these settings right here. So that's audio, that's uh, eco power. So this kind of takes the place of a tachometer and whenever you're charging or whenever you're using your E pedal and you let your foot off of the, off of the accelerator, this goes way down and it charges right here. And you can see that that little swirly arrows, that means it's using regenerative braking in order to charge the batteries of the leaf. And right here is your eco area that you're driving in the most efficient electricity way. You know what I mean? 131 miles left on the battery, which means that it's got 56% battery power left. That's really, really cool. And then I can press down because you see I've got these little uh, lights right here and that means there are four pages right there. So charging time, battery temp, battery capacity. And I think that's real time battery capacity. Audio off, navigation, so that's gonna be your compass. And this is kind of like a energy economy history in intervals of up to an hour here at the bottom and then miles per kilowatt hour pressing right. This is going to be for radar cruise control and um, 
So this makes it so that you can adjust the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you while you're using radar cruise control and then back to all the settings that we saw before. That is such a cool thing. And then here's just your good old fashioned speedometer. I love that. Okay, let's take a look at this center console. I really like this screen. Here's a, here's a cool little aspect of it. You can actually swipe everything. That's, that's such a cool thing. Check out the uh, weather forecast. Five day. That's, that is such a neat, neat thing. I really like that. Then you can just go back. And so that's just scrolling throughout the menu. You can see here there's three screens because there's three little orange dots right there to represent how many screens there are. You can press menu and that takes you to this main screen. Obviously it says menu right there and then that's when you can scroll. Then you have map and that takes you obviously to the map. You can zoom in, zoom out, destination, POI stands for point of interest, go home if it's programmed, and then phone. Here's the thing I would recommend about go home. Do not put your actual address in there because if someone is able to get the keys to your leaf, they can go right to your house and then probably break in. Uh, you can go settings right here and adjust all of the different settings that you have all for the navigation system and for various menus. You also have the ability to swipe here and you can change the settings in all of these as well. You can go to camera, display settings. This is where you're going to adjust the brightness, contrast, tint, color, and black level to, uh, to adjust for the light inside of the car and everything. Although it is going to adjust automatically somewhat as well. Check surroundings. So this is going to be that camera that we looked that's going to be mounted on the passenger side rear view mirror and then this is an overhead view it basically takes a composite stitching of all of the different cameras around the leaf to make it look overhead give you an overhead view really very cool back to the map i like how menu right here makes it so that you can swipe all the different menu things there there's phone and i do have my phone connected you can see here there's the battery and the signal strength and everything as far as Bluetooth is concerned, you can do text messages and then you have audio. You can see here how to gar car guy is hooked up. So this is going to be all of your audio settings right here. And you have your different sources down here. So you can go source and you can pick the source. You can also customize the audio sources right there. And you can see you've got US, USB 1, USB 2. I love that. And that's USB 1, USB 2 is all right here. Then I have camera here. And you can see there's the backup camera. There's the camera surround. And then I can go back. So this is all really easy stuff to use. It's not super sophisticated. And that's actually honestly what I like about it is the fact that it's super easy to use. Okay, let's take this baby for a spin. All right, all right, let's get it out here on the highway and see what that's like accelerating onto the highway here. All right, here's the e pedal situation light is turning red. It came to a nice, gentle, complete stop, and I did not push the brake at all. I just, all I did was let my foot off the accelerator. I love that, as you already know. Here we go. That's 70. That's got such a good feel to it. A little bit of wind noise now, obviously, because I'm doing 65. But the feel of it is just absolutely fantastic. And it, and it feels it feels strong I mean there's there's it doesn't feel weak in any way and like I mentioned before the uh, the torque is just automatic power is instant cool little feature right here I kind of call that like a like a tachometer almost for a battery vehicle and now when you let your foot off the accelerator completely you can see it starts charging it see all the blue lit up and now white. Okay, everybody, that's going to do it for our look at the 2021 Nissan Leaf SL Plus. 
I really like this vehicle. Very nice, very smooth, obviously super quiet. Uh, and it's it's got a good track record. Nissan has been producing the Leaf for years and years. So if you can find one, I would grab one. Again, a huge thank you to Impex Auto Sales in Greensboro, North Carolina for the opportunity to film this very cool Nissan Leaf. And I'll be sure to leave all of their contact information in the description box below. But remember, the most important thing of all, have a wonderful day, everybody.